What's up, YouTube? Meat Magnet here. Uh, today we are looking at export buses. So this is guide seven of our eight and two series. We'll go over what is an export bus, uh, some of the cards that you can actually put into the export bus and change its behavior, and we'll do a little bit of very very basic uh, machine automation. So let's get to it. First thing we're going to need is uh, an export bus. What you're going to see here is that these formation cores, they're actually reused. So if you happen to make some of these earlier, uh, make some extras just because you are going to use them. Uh, you got some iron ingots and then a piston. So these are pretty simple. I actually have one set up over here. Now we can set these up a few different ways. Annie Line and I, we like to set these up so that we're using a chest as a buffer almost all the time. If you notice these diamond chests, they have a huge inventory here. So we can literally fill these things up and shut the ME network off if we need to do some work or move stuff. Once your network gets pretty big and you got to make changes, it does take a, it takes a few seconds for your ME network to come back up. So just keep that in mind for later on. Anyway. We'll let this fill up and these thermal expansion machines will just keep doing their thing. Use a chest as an output buffer too and then once that's all done we'll just import it all back into the ME network once it comes back up. So I'm not going to go into a whole lot of um, configuring these thermal expansion machines. If you want to check out our YouTube page, uh, AnyLine's actually got a uh, set up there that's super efficient, it's super compact and it works really really well. He uses that quite a bit on all of our builds, so what he's got going is it's pretty sweet, so check that out. Uh, the only thing I've got here is that the import from the far, or the, excuse me, the diamond chest on the far left is importing to the left side of the machine. Output is going out the top and the right, and then uh, RF furnace is accepting input from the left and then outputting to the chest on the right. It's the only thing that's doing. You'll notice there's a servo here. I'm just using that to dump into the machine. So here's our export bus, and you'll see I've already got some stuff in here, and I'm gonna take that out of there. Let's um, let's go take a look and see what these cards are made out of. So right away you're gonna notice that you're gonna need advanced cards for a couple of these, and these are pretty simple. So it's a calc processor, a couple of diamonds, redstone, and some iron. Your basic card is a little bit different. Pretty close, just a couple gold, redstone, kelp processor, and then some more iron. So you're going to need a bunch of those. The first one we'll get into here is the capacity card. And these are pretty handy. So we can put our capacity card in here, and what you'll notice is that you're given a single slot to begin with, which it's handy. So if we put this in here, let's take these out. few of those in there. You're going to notice that the ME network is now pushing those into this chest. So that's handy for, for ore processing immediately. And then there's a whole bunch of other functions. You can get pretty creative with this. But just note that right away you are only given one actual sort or inventory slot. I'll call them inventory slots, but it's actually a sort criteria. So what this capacity card does is it actually opens up four more. If you were to add one more card, you'd have access to this entire inventory. Now there's a couple things with these cards. You usually get, um, you call it a mode with a few of them. This particular one has a, it's, it's called a scheduling mode. So it says export the first item until the network is empty and then try the next one. So let's actually load this guy up with a few different items here. So nothing coming in at the moment. Put a few of each of these in here. Let's go see what it's doing. Okay, so first we get, we're getting our iron first. It actually dumped in a smart cable. And and these export buses are kind of quirky when you put multiples in there. You should have three of each, except the few that I put in there for iron. But anyway. 
I have noticed some quirky stuff going on with these export buses. Sometimes it'll get an item out of order every once in a while, and I'm not sure how a 2 is processing during separate ticks. Every once in a while, it just happens. There are some fail safes that you can put in place to keep weird stuff like this from happening, like this smart cable came in before the rest of the iron, and then the rest of this stuff. So just keep that in mind. I'll show some of that in some of the the later videos I do on uh, on automating some machinery. But keep in mind you do have this capacity upgrade available. It is useful early for processing ores. You just keep dumping stuff into a chest as you accumulate it and throw it into the ME network. But that is there for you. The other scheduling modes. You'll see round robin. This will put stuff in. I'm pretty sure it goes from middle, left, down, right, and then up. And if you had the rest of this open, it would go middle, left, and then all the way around for that. Random mode of year, actually, depending on the random number generator. So 0 through 8 or 1 through 9, whatever it happens to be, it'll just start randomly dumping this stuff into the inventory. So that's the capacity card. These are very useful very early in your machine automation. Let's go take a look at the next card. This next one is actually going to be our redstone card. So this will give you the ability to actually shut off that export bus. Let's go see this guy in action. These are pretty useful. Let's put this in here. You're going to notice that there's actually another set of modes for this one. Always active, so this is always on. You can switch it to active without signal, with signal, or activate once for pulse. A lot of times I'll have this set to um, activate once per pulse. We do some computer craft stuff, and this, this becomes handy because you can actually pulse those from those computers. So it will dump one item for every pulse, or if you pulse it multiple times, it'll just keep dumping you items. It is handy. Note this is there. The one we're actually concerned about right now is active with the signal. Let's put our iron back in there. So our lever, lever is actually off. And let's put 10 of these guys into the ME network. Let's double check it right now. Nothing is being imported. Let's flip this switch so the state is on. Should have turned that device on. And there we go. Start seeing those. Okay, let's shut that off again. Shouldn't see any more now. Yep, and that's it. So we've got multiple modes in the in the redstone card. You'll have to experiment with those. I will show some of this other stuff as we go in some of the other videos. So keep an eye out for that on ways to actually use that a little bit more. The next card here is actually our crafting card. And let's go take a look at that quickly. So you got your basic card and then the crafting table. The thing with crafting cards is you are allowed to actually craft from the bus. Now, I'm not going to get into this a whole lot right now because this gets into another complicated setup that it's going to require a few videos to go through to actually get the gist of what's going on. So, do know that this is part of automating with crafting computers. So, I won't go into this, but look out for it in the next few videos. But it, it does apply to export buses. Okay. The next card we have here, the acceleration card. This I'll show you at the same time as our fuzzy card. And the fuzzy card is just another advanced card with a piece of wool. So we can show these together. Before we run over here. Let's get this out of here. And I have noticed that a lot of times if you put a redstone card into one of these buses, that it doesn't actually work correctly. I don't know if it's a bug or what it is. It's just easier to take it off there if you're not going to use it and then put one back on. For some reason it just it 
just have bad luck with it. So let's check out this acceleration card right away. Put this whole stack of iron in here. Okay, do you notice that, yeah, this is kind of slow. It's going, but it's not going very fast. Let's throw this acceleration card in here. And you'll notice it is significantly faster. Rather than one at a time, it's actually dumping in, uh, what, here, eight? Eight at a time. So you can make these go very, very quick with acceleration cards. They are worth the investment if you have the material early game to do it. Okay, let's get that iron out of there. We'll pull this acceleration card. So let's look at the fuzzy card. And these get kind of complicated. Um, you've got your comparison over here on the side. I've found that it's good, if you're going to use these things, to keep a reference to AE2's website for this. They have a chart underneath the fuzzy card, their category, that kind of details what is going on with these. Uh, I can show this quickly. Uh, we'll split the damage at 99% here. And then we'll take a bull, and a lot of times Annie Line and I will get a whole bunch of random uh, broken bowls or swords or whatever from our mob spawners. And this is one way we actually take care of all that crap. So I usually take the bowl with some sort of, uh, usually I try to get a little bit higher durability and put it in there and set the comparison at 99%. So what that does is it, if we throw these in here, throw a regular bow in, and notice how that hasn't come out of the ME network, it's still sitting there. But if we throw this bow back in, we might have to make a modification here quickly. There it is. So what this does is, if the durability is less than what we've got going on here, it's just going to start dumping this crap into that chest. So a lot of times I'd throw a nullifier underneath this chest and just start getting rid of all this crap. Now, you're going to have to take note of the chart because depending on what you put in, as a filter or sort criteria right here will make a huge difference on what you've got coming out. So refer to that chart. We won't go over it because that would literally be another video all by itself. Check it out. Experiment with it. Dump it in the chest or whatever before you nullify it or whatever you're going to use it for. Um, just note that some of these cards do take a little bit of experimentation. Okay. So, there you have the ME export bus. So let's go through, let's set this up for, just quickly, just to dump some of this, this iron ore through here. And I think we'll do gold too. So let's just look and see how we set this up to make that work. We'll take this bow out because we don't want that going in there. And then we'll turn this back on. Okay, so let's put our capacity card in here. And I think, because it's not going to make a huge difference on what we actually put in here, because the way of stacking is probably going to work here is it will just dump whatever it can into the machine. I got a feeling that it'll probably dump a whole bunch of iron in there right away, and it'll just stack because I got a resonant servo on there. So we'll just do. Uh, random mode just to show it and then we'll put one of those in and one of those and let's watch and see what shows up in this chest they're gonna come out of there pretty fast we're looking at a stack of gold ore see that gold go in there pretty quick and come out quick and there's our random random iron ore coming in there so that's how we kind of string these things together. A lot of times, for your basic ore processing, you can get away with another capacity card if you can afford it. Fill these up and just start dumping your raw iron and stuff in there. Get a small setup like this. It's going into the RF furnace, and then we'll come out the other side. So next video, we're going to do a little bit on import buses and some of the cards you can use with that. So that's it for this guy. This is Meef Magnet.
talk to you guys later.